Times announced on January 14th that public libraries would be spared a second round of cuts, which would have forced libraries to shutter on Saturdays. But this is cold comfort for the patrons who feel they've already lost so much by cutting Sunday service. Producer Maggie Cole introduces us to those affected and how you can help. Ah, hello, my name is Maggie. I'm from Congo. When I come to this country, I didn't speak English. The Queen's Public Library an invaluable resource for resident Maggie Yaya, who taught herself to write and speak English there. Library place you can find somebody, just talk, listen or not listen, but you see somebody, can you look at you, can you say hi to you, make you to feel human being. But library resources, like the ones Maggie relies on, are getting cut short. Due to budget cuts made by Mayor Eric Adams, there's no longer seven-day library service, a move that saves the city $23.6 million, but that number only amounts to 0.021% of the city's $110 billion fiscal year budget. If we're taking um, library hours away, if we're having our city agencies have to find efficiencies inside, which is traumatizing for my commissioners who dedicate their lives to these initiatives, Marsha, everything is on the table. By having to close, you're taking away community connection, people's connections with their neighbors, people's connections with other cultures, their connections with literature, the written word. Lauren Camito is the director and chair of Urban Librarians Unite, a group working to save New York libraries. She sees firsthand how these cuts will affect real people like Maggie and Philip. I need the, uh, the services here because I, I, I'm poor. <laughs> And I don't have uh, my own computer at home, uh, so access to the equipment here is essential for me. I have the experience of homelessness. So what do we do? What comes next? The library has something to give to everybody. And what the public needs to be doing right now, if they value that, is to be talking to their elected representatives and also to be an active library user. Rachel Finston is a librarian in Maryland, where this year, public libraries actually had an increase in their yearly budget, according to the General Assembly of Maryland. This is thanks to mandated funding increases that Maryland instituted to avoid ongoing budget cuts. What we need is statistics proving that people use the library. If you go out and get a library card right now, you are a check mark that tells people this library is valued. If you go out and check out a book, you are a add another hash mark that says, Somebody is using it. You know, the libraries are one of the largest providers of adult education, of literacy, of after school programming, of any entity in New York. And they do a phenomenal job with very limited resources. For education, when we come, we don't make money, we don't have money. When the library is giving us education, we don't cost us. To me, the, the defunding of, of the libraries mean an exacerbation of my own situation, for instance, people who are homeless or, or jobless. The revenue for the city's budget is actually up right now. There's no need to make mid-year cuts that harm our communities. I hope that may I can think twice for us. And CBS News New York will continue to follow the impact of budget cuts across the city. You can find more information at CBSNewYork.com.